In this video, I'm going to show you how to grow oyster and reishi mushrooms on logs and stumps. There are a few items you're going to need before you can inoculate your logs. The first is plug spawn. I have some oyster, plug spawn, and reishi. You're also going to need some kind of wax to seal up the holes. I'm using beeswax. You also need a hammer to nail in the plugs into the log. You'll need a drill with a 5 16th drill bit or 8.5 millimeters, as well as a hardwood tree that is recently cut down. I'm using American Beech. Now you're going to want a tree that is recently cut down because of the high moisture content and also it is a level playing field for your mycelium to expand. Uh, if you took an older tree, like let's say you cut it down a month or two ago, the moisture content is going to be much lower and it'll probably be already colonized by different bacteria and fungi. So you want your mycelium to have the best chance. So I have my American beech log. You'll want a log with a diameter of at least four inches, preferably in the range of six to eight inches. Um, this allows the mycelium to spread uh, further. And uh, I've heard that for every inch in diameter your log has, that's an additional year that it'll fruit. So if you have a log that is six inches in diameter, it'll most likely fruit for six years. Now this is the fun part, drilling the holes. You'll want to drill in a diamond pattern with the holes being four to six inches apart. You'll want to drill your holes an inch and a half deep so that the dowels can fit in there snugly. I have two plug spawns that I purchased from uh, Mushroom Mountain in South Carolina. This is brown oyster mushrooms, and here we have red reishi mushroom. Plug spawn are wooden dowels that have been cultured with a specific mycelium. I'm going to put the plug spawn of the oyster mushroom in a specific set of logs and the reishi in a different set of logs. Then I'm going to let them sit for two to three months um, to colonize and then I'll partially bury them because they like to fruit um, slightly ab like below ground. Now it's hammer time. This part of the process is quite fun. It's like playing whack-a-mole with the uh, plug spawn. I'm using the logs with the thicker diameter to be inoculated with the reishi mushroom because I rarely see reishi growing in the wild on smaller trees. But I have seen oyster mushrooms grow on relatively thin branches. I'm going to melt the beeswax to seal up the holes of my plug spawn to protect them and retain moisture in the log. Once the beeswax is melted, you'll have to act quickly because the beeswax can solidify rapidly just at normal temperatures. You want to paint happy little clouds of beeswax over your spawn plug holes. This will protect them and retain moisture.
Once the logs are plugged and sealed, you want to stack them closely together in a shady region so they can colonize for a few months before you want to fruit them. This is an example of a log that I inoculated with cold blue oyster mushrooms. It inoculated a year after I had put the plug spawn in. Homegrown mushrooms are quite tasty when they're sautéed and often are meatier than the varieties you find at the grocery store. This book is a useful resource on mushroom cultivation. For both of the mushroom varieties I use, they both need to fruit slightly below ground um, in what is called a log graft or trench, which is in a diagram in this book. After the logs have been colonized for three or four months, you want to partially bury them with either dirt leaf litter or wood chips to promote fruiting. The reishi species I'm using, Ganoderma lucididum, likes to fruit on hardwood stumps, so I'm inoculating the stump of the tree I cut down. It's an American beech, and I'm going to drill the similar uh, diamond pattern into it. I got a little excited with my drill and put the holes too closely together, but ideally they should be five to six inches apart. Just like the logs, the stump should be freshly cut, ideally within the last month. I cut this one down a few days before. Next you're going to tuck the plug spawn into their holes. And again, <laughs> these holes should be a lot farther apart, more than five inches. Um, so when this stump starts fruiting, the ratio will probably be growing on top of each other, but that's all right, I guess. You live and you learn. As you plug up your stump, it'll begin to resemble one of those board games with all the pegs. Stop! Hammer time! Push the plugs into the stump with a hammer or a mallet. Now you're going to seal the holes with beeswax again. You can also use paraben wax or any other natural wax. This part of the process is very relaxing and hectic at the same time because the beeswax, once it's melted, will start to solidify at a rapid pace. In six to eight months, you should see some reishi fruiting. This footage is of wild reishi, Ganoderma suge, that grows on hemlock trees. Ganoderma lucididum won't look much different, except that it will be growing on a hardwood tree. The mushroom will be very colorful as it begins to grow. It starts off as an antler and then takes on a UFO type shape with rings of red, orange, yellow, and then a white at the edge. As it matures, it turns maroon red. This mushroom is inedible except for the outer white ring um, as it's growing, but is largely considered a medicinal mushroom. It is anti-inflammatory, immunomodulating, and it often creates a state of calm relaxation. I hope this demonstration has been helpful, and subscribe for more foraging and mushroom growing videos.